when we go from a function, say 3x plus sine x, to its derivative, in this case 3 plus cosine x, that's called differentiating or deriving. Anti-differentiating or anti-deriving takes us the other direction, from a derivative to a function that has that as its derivative. For example, if g prime of x is 3x squared, that's the derivative, what could g of x, the original function, be? Well, g of x could be x cubed, since the derivative of x cubed is 3x squared. Or it could also be g of x equals x cubed plus 7, for example, or g of x equals x cubed plus any constant, where I write a general constant with a capital C. That's because the derivative of a constant is 0, so the derivative of x cubed plus a constant is just going to be 3x squared, no matter what the constant is. A function capital F of x is called an antiderivative of lowercase f of x on an interval a, b if the derivative capital F prime of x is equal to lowercase f of x on that interval a, b. In other words, we can think of little f as being the derivative of the function capital F. In the above example, x cubed is an antiderivative of 3x squared. And in fact, x cubed plus c for any constant c is also an antiderivative of 3x squared. When we add on a general constant c, that's sometimes referred to as a general antiderivative. We found a general family of antiderivatives for the function 3x squared. But could there be other antiderivatives? Other functions whose derivative is 3x squared? In fact, there are no others. And one way to think about this intuitively is if you have two functions with the same derivative, it's like having two runners in a race that always speed up and slow down at exactly the same times. If one of those runners starts ahead of the other, then the distance between them will always stay exactly the same. That's the vertical distance drawn here in the graph, and that's the constant c that separates one antiderivative, y equals x cubed, from another, y equals x cubed plus c. And in general, if capital F of x is an antiderivative for little f of x, then all other antiderivatives can be written in the form capital F of x plus c for some constant c. A more rigorous justification of this fact can be proved using the mean value theorem, as I'll do in a separate video. If you know the derivatives for some standard functions, then it's pretty easy to guess some antiderivatives. For example, the antiderivative of 1 is x, since the derivative of x is 1. If we want to make that a general antiderivative, we can add a constant c. The antiderivative of x is x squared over 2. Because when I take the derivative of x squared over 2, the 2 that I pull down and multiply cancels with the 2 in the denominator, leaving me x. Again, I can make this a more general antiderivative by adding a constant c. More generally, the antiderivative of x to the n for any n that's not equal to negative 1 is given by x to the n plus 1 divided by n plus 1 plus a constant c. I can check this by taking the derivative of x to the n plus 1 over n plus 1. The n here is just a constant, so using the power rule, I get n plus 1 times x to the n divided by n plus 1. That yields x to the n, which is what I wanted. We can think of this rule as the power rule for anti-differentiating, since it's closely related to the power rule for differentiating. Now, this rule doesn't apply when n equals negative 1. Notice that we'd be dividing by 0 if n were negative 1. But we can handle the case when n equals negative 1 separately. Since x to the negative 1 is 1 over x, 
we recognize that the antiderivative of one of our x is just ln of the absolute value of x plus c, since the derivative of ln of the absolute value of x is one over x. Please pause the video and see how many more antiderivatives you can fill in in this table. You should get all of these formulas based on the analogous formulas for differentiating. Notice that the antiderivative of sine x is negative cosine x, not cosine x, because the derivative of cosine x is negative sine x. If I have a constant times x to the n, I'm going to call the constant a instead of c since I've already got some c's floating around. If I want the antiderivative of a times x to the n, that's just going to be a times the antiderivative of x to the n, which is x to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 plus a constant c. That's because when I take the derivative of a constant times a function, I can just pull the constant out. More generally, the antiderivative of a constant a times any function, little f of x, is just going to equal a times the antiderivative of little f of x, which I'll denote with capital F of x plus a constant c. The antiderivative of f of x plus g of x is capital F of x plus capital G of x plus c, where capital F and capital G are the antiderivatives of lowercase f and lowercase g. This is because the derivative of a sum is equal to the sum of the derivatives. Let's use this information to compute the antiderivative for f of x equals 5 over 1 plus x squared minus 1 over 2 times the square root of x. First, I'm going to rewrite f of x as 5 times 1 over 1 plus x squared minus 1 half times x to the minus 1 half. I know that the antiderivative of 1 over 1 plus x squared is arctangent of x. And by the power rule for anti-differentiating, the antiderivative of x to the minus 1 half, I get by raising the exponent by 1, negative 1 half plus 1 is positive 1 half, and then dividing by the new exponent. By my constant multiplication rules, I can just multiply by my constants, and that's my antiderivative, capital F of x. I have to remember the plus c for the general antiderivative. I can simplify a little bit by canceling these one halves, and I get a final answer of 5 times arctan of x minus the square root of x plus c. In this video, we introduced antiderivatives and built a table of antiderivatives using our knowledge of derivatives.